studying the burrowing habits of lightning moles in the Precursor Basin next to our village for years. But now those awful lurkers have scared the moles to the surface. And since they're blind as bats, they can't find their way back underground. If you could herd them back into their burrowing tunnels, you might just save their lives. I've got a power cell that says you can do it. Allow me to tell you a tale of true torment. Within the confines of Donkey Kong 64, there is a minigame known as... Beaver Bother. Because Rare really loves stuffing dirty humor into its cute little animal platformers. You control a small crocodile enemy, for some reason, and run around chasing beavers into a hole. The issue is that the player has no direct control over where the beaver goes. They can bite with their little claptrap friend, but the bite simply causes the beaver to run away from it based on the path it was previously moving in. Once it gets out of the bite's range, it can just as easily curve around the hole, and there's precious little a player can do about it without deep knowledge of Donkey Kong Beaver AI patterns. Thus, the player's actions are ultimately inefficacious, or unable to produce their desired effect. Herding missions like these are known as infamous time wasters, with Beaver Bother being the most pronounced due to having a funny name, and being way harder due to the goal being in the middle. Way easier to just guide things into a square around a perimeter. It's designed in such a way to evoke powerlessness and waste time. So expand the feeling from that one minigame into a whole level and add a flying motorcycle, and you've got the Precursor Basin from Jack and Daxter. Rarely is there a level with such a promising concept that becomes an absolute struggle in player control. The conceit of the level is that Jack controls it entirely on his Zoomer, a cool air motorcycle that goes real fast. The player just got to use it to avoid obstacles through a fire canyon, may have played with it a bit in a limited area of Misty Island, and now gets an entire playground devoted to racing around and mastering its tight controls. It sounds pretty great. Except before you enter the level, you'll probably run into this NPC right in front of it. She makes a request for you to herd the lightning moles into a hole, which, okay. I mean, herding is annoying, and those aren't even moles. Seriously, what is that? But Jack's attacks have some momentum behind them and move things in a set direction. And you've heard of things before. Then you realize, oh right, I'm on a hover bike. It doesn't have attacks. And you realize, oh god, this thing doesn't turn very well and I have to come to a full stop if I overshoot the hole. Then you see a lightning bolt just decide to walk over the hole instead of going in and it's... Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! But actively having Beaver Bother in the level would just make for one bad mission, not an entirely ineffectual level. Precursor Basin, however, decides to go above and beyond in making the player's actions feel powerless and useless. The next main mission of the level is to purify these plants infected with Dark Eco, a kind of evil life force... thing. To do this, you go to a vent with Green Eco, which is a kind of good life force thing, and run over the plants. That's pretty much it. You just run over plants. You run out, go to the vent again. Some of the plants sprout back up, so you gotta repurify them. Rinse, repeat until you've done enough runs to complete the objective. It's one of the most impressive wastes of time. Utilizing a mechanic used nowhere else in the game, so the player has no way to gauge how quickly or well they should be doing, with zero threat to the player or challenge other than, eh, keep doing it and you'll get it done eventually. Even busy work in games usually requires a brief segment of interaction. This does as little as possible to engage while still being considered a challenge. It's a literal chore. Now, these plants are tedious and arbitrary, but at least their inclusion isn't particularly annoying. Not so with the precursor rings, <laughs> oh no! These rings spawn in a linear procession, 
requiring the player to pass through them in sequence with an unmarked time limit in order to claim their prize. Normally, these kinds of missions are relatively fun, showing mastery over vehicle controls. The issue with Precursor Basin's rings is that the path to following them is unintuitive. Rings don't spawn in plain sight of one another. Some are around corners or placed down one of two possible paths, and there's no minimap in sight. There is no time to make a mistake with these. The player has to learn which path each ring is down by trial and error. And with an area as open as Precursor Basin, that should be fine. There should be a reward for memorizing a route. However, the game does not restart you immediately from the first ring in case of a failure. No matter how far away you are, you must physically return to the first ring in order to restart the challenge. Considering the trial and error nature of the mission, having to work your way back to the starting line repeatedly at every failure is maddening. At this point, the game ceases to be about mastery and becomes about rolling the dice to see if the developers are generous enough to put the next ring in a place where it's accessible. This is not a hard mission. This is not a mission that improves a player's skill. It's a mission that takes away player agency and is only effective at being a time vampire. Precursor Basin shouldn't be as bad as it is. There's a fully functional time trial area that, while easy, tests the player's reactions fairly. There are chases after flying enemies that, while frustrating, test the player's fine handling skills decently. The area is open and has multiple levels of elevation for Jack to jump off of, but everything, from the race to the rings to the moles, has an element where it just seems like the game is intentionally wasting the player's time that's really hard to forgive. There's no learning with the vast majority of its challenges, just trial and error until the game finally decides to agree to let the player progress. It's clearly something noted and learned from as well. Jack 2 has similar vehicle missions, and these all feature a quick retry function and a mini-map showing the next objective, to eliminate frustration and let the player feel that the mistakes made are their own. It's incredible how a damaged product can be fixed by such simple touches. So go ahead and take a look at the basin, see its flaws, and find a way to make your player feel like their actions actually matter. If not, just like Jack, you're only designing for inefficacy. Step one, stay alive. Step two, think about not doing something like that again! <laughs>